map of year into a new map for this season and our Protoss player the pacifier from White Rabbit Gaming has a 2-0 lead to our Terran player Star Drive. Yeah, we have seen two really amazing games right up front. You know, the the, the first map, you know, was a little bit of backwards and forwards, um, but the second game, that Blink Stalker, Star Drive, not expecting that one, which uh, which caught him by surprise, and the harass just being a little bit too much for him. Not even the mines could save him. Not even the mines, and as you see, he didn't just blink from the one place. He managed to move, go through the side, go up the main ramp into the the main entrance, blinking, going around going in, targeting down a unit, killing one marauder, blinking out, going back, killing a supply depot, blinking out, definitely doing a lot of damage with that. Yeah, the thing about Starcraft, you know, as we know, you know, it's 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 a game of small victories. We you constantly need to need to stay on top of the guys, you know, you need to, you know, go in almost like boxing, you know, fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee kind of thing, you know, uh, go in, punch hard, you know, come back and uh, give the guy to, you know, time, don't give the guy time to to actually respond or recover properly but in the bottom left hand corner we do see our Protoss player who's up 2-0 games it is the Pacifier Pacifier and, and the crowd goes wild and goes wild and in the top right hand corner we have our blue Terran player Star Drive <laughs> nice fantastic <laughs> <laughs> cool right, so what do you think we're going to see on this one? You know, um, what we have seen a lot of the pros do. You know, they um, they literally just go for that that second expansion expansion a little bit later than what you would really um, you know normally go for. So we might actually see that being taken around about the six minute mark, unless you're really greedy. Zerg players like to take them quite quickly, but a, a Zerg player likes to take anything quite quickly, uh, like a cheap woman almost. <laughs> I definitely agree, a cheap woman. But I do see this map for Terran. I think it's definitely a Terran map. I think we're going to see a lot of drops. There's a lot of big areas in this map. There's a lot of drops. It'll be nice for Pacifier to get that warp prism to get inside there, warp some DTs for our Terran players to get in with a, maybe a mine drop or marine marauder. It's going to be very difficult to defend in this map. To so defend your main base and defend your expansion, it's going to not be easy for our Protoss player. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, we're going to see a rush here. You know, Yonsu is actually the, the the new map with the shortest rushing distance. So the distance between these two bases are ridiculously short. We do see Pacifier just throwing down one gas. I think that one gas he literally is just going to mine it for about um, you know 50 50 gas. So that there we go. Two probes go down. Uh, three probes go down. I think he's just going to mine that to get warp gate usage, throw down the warp gates, and maybe even go for a traditional four gate. Star Drive will not be expecting a four gate rush in this game. Yeah, definitely. I don't think he will be, but it is very risky to go with an all in. That previous game he did go an all in blink stalk phase. Didn't have an expansion. It might be a bit risky to do that again. Mm. Star Drive going for the second barracks quite quite early here before he actually builds the the next supply depot. So first marines already out. Oh, he's building a reaper. He actually wants to go and see what uh, what pacifier is doing. And here we can see the probe for pacifier moving out. Um, he's probably yeah. He's just taking taking control of the Zelnaga tower to see what on earth is Star Drive doing. Is he sending some units my way, or um, you know what are we doing? But I think if uh, yeah, there we go. The the second simulator is down, and the Reaper is on its yep, way. Yep, Reapers. We're going to see Reapers. We're going to see both barracks pumping up Reapers. He has expanded. He's going to expand with that as well. Yeah, we do see the command center going down for for Star Drive. He's actually taking that expansion um, pretty much on time. So it should hit that expansion around about the six between six and seven minutes. That should be up and running. He can be mining from it. And when we look at Pacifier, he is actually one Stalker, one Zealot. He's just going for a little bit of an early push. He has seen that Reaper. He has seen a Reaper coming across the map. He saw it with a Zilnaga Tower. So he, if he was watching, he's aware that there is a Reaper out. And he should be able to defend that, depending on how many Reapers do come. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. We have a slight worker supply advantage to our Protoss player at the moment. 22 to 17. Yeah, 
And uh, yeah, we, there's, there's, there's nothing much to say. You know, that probe trying to pro, to pop up there. I think he just wanted to see. You know, is is that expansion down yet, uh, or is it not? You know, when when can I plan this this little bit of harass? The still moving across the map. The slow zealot running off to the, uh, off to him. And then we do see a bunker going down, so he's just going to defend that and make sure that nothing is coming up that ramp to harass him quite early. The Reaper is in the base, he's scouting around, he's not seeing anything um, apart from the, the the pylon that is built like way on the right hand side of the um, of the base. And I think he must be thinking, what the hell is going on here? There's, there's absolutely nothing in the base, and uh, he's literally just attacking. Oh, jeez, Oh, we see him pushing out, he's going to kill that command center, he's going to kill those units quite easy. The command center is down, he's going to be able to push in there with just that stalker and a G-Lock in motion for, he's going to have the full workers. No, he needs to cancel that bunker. bunker, oh, and the bunker actually just goes down. He builds a bunker upstairs though, uh, he moved his two barracks, and uh, so that's going to be up the time, so then we're going to let you pull this down the time walk, and he actually needs to move quite a bit more. I so need to be able to defend that all those enemies are going down. Three coming out, and he just kills. Oh, the bucket is so so far. He's gonna, he's gonna build that bunker yet. Now he's gonna go inside. And there we go. Now uh, the ECDs will have to fix that. We're not see the much SCVs, go around. SCVs are almost like the elves. You remember the the shoemakers, you know, fairy tale. You know, yeah. stuff just gets fixed, you know, and these are the ECVs, <laughs> you know, they're kind of like behind the scenes, uh, they're actually the true heroes of the game. Yeah, definitely, and they can fight, they're pretty tough little buggers too. Yeah. You've seen expansion going up for Pacifier after that push, I mean, a lot of damage, forcing and killing guys for a couple of minutes. We've seen Observer coming out, we see plus one defense coming up, another additional two gateways. He's applying a lot of pressure and at the same time stopping Stardrive from expanding the command center. Yeah, no, he's playing very well. Also, when you look at his main, you know, he's keeping 16 workers on that um, on that base of his. Uh, three on each gas, 16 workers, optimal to get the best return on your on your um, on your mineral patches. Also, getting out a couple of observers, great map control, um, pacifier, really, really is doing quite well here. I agree. And uh, Star Drive moves out to go and take that expansion. He has got two engineering bays for upgrades. Or do you think it's a mistake? I don't think he upgrades yet. Yeah, um, I think they were meant for upgrades, but with that early harass that came out, I think it made it made it a little bit difficult for Star Drive. But we do see also a missile turret coming down. Uh, two missile turrets coming down, just in case there is any observer that's trying to to see anything in his base. Does build another command center to the south as well to take that second expansion, which we know is a little bit more difficult to um, to actually defend than than the natural expand. And over here we can see pacifier putting his observer there, just seeing everything um, okay. that if, if that Star Drive is currently if doing. If you look at the units lost, eleven workers lost two artillery players compared to only one unit to the Protoss. Workers killed four workers to one in favor of our Protoss. If we look at resource collection rate, it's very equal in the resource collection rate as mineral wise. Gas is slightly favored to the Protoss player. And as for army supply, 19 to 24 in favor of the Protoss. And workers created 45 to 33, as we have seen in both all three, all three games, is the worker supply has been ahead by our Protoss player. Mm. Army supply quite equal as well. Um, Pacifier's got slightly, bit of, a little bit of an advantage in terms of in terms of army supply, but worker supply looking looking very very solid at the moment. If you see a dark shrine being built with a warp prism, they are going to be DTs. He does have turrets. You should be able to see this. Plus one, plus one is being upgraded from our Protoss player at the moment. Just like plus two armor is being upgraded. Wow, photo play. He has got a central offside, so he's gonna get storm, he is gonna get charged. So he is preparing for a longer game. Yeah. The command center sitting at the bottom, not doing anything. Uh, just uh, there we go. He's building some SCVs from it, just to supplement the the current ones mining from his natural. I only see three barracks, three barracks at the moment. Mm. Nice and this. The army of pacifiers is, is, is pretty big and with those observers sitting oh, just over his army, you know, he, he can see exactly what's coming, you know, so he's got a lot of time to prepare for whatever Star Drive is planning at the moment. 
that's true. He doesn't have all map map control. He needs to get this down longer tower again to see when he pushes up. Stardrive did build a reactor onto his star Starport though, and he's building two medivacs at a time. So I think if he gets a lot of stuff out on time, he might actually be able to push this, depending on what pacifier does with that sentry. If that sentry goes up, essentially that's a four damage modifier that takes off his any, any single marine. All GTs are in the main base there, took out that turret, almost took out that. Oh, we may walk in another Dark Templar, killing a lot of workers. That is a bit of a concern. Those two DT DTs are doing a ton of damage. And the one actually looks like he's getting away. Yep, oh, there we go, there goes the scan. And he does take out three DTs. Oh, DTs did their damage there, killing a couple of workers there. Worker supplies 52 to 36. And you just killed 18 to 7, 9 workers lost by Stardrive. Oh mm. So not too much damage done, but considering you know he doesn't have a lot of um, lot of ACVs mining at the moment, 14 to 52. Uh, they do have the mules, so the mules will actually help them out a bit. But this command center is still sitting at the bottom here, he is actually not flying it to an expansion. And if he does want to fly it to this, this one over here, you know, you would expect him to, to have built it. In the expansion, but we do see two. I think he's going to move it here. But we do actually see a drop coming. There's a drop. Two coming. medivacs, one in the west and one in the east. Both of them going. It seems like he's going to drop the expansion, and or the, the natural base. and and the main at the same time. Yeah, he needs to get this. He needs to get this. Oh, we see a drop. This is not fantastic. Oh, it's not good at all. This might be a problem. If he drops, it will be another victory to, well, will be a victory to our Terran player. But the rules actually state that you need to use the recovery function, so we actually have to recall the players into the game and let okay. them pick up where they left off. Alright, cool, then we'll do it. Right, so, um, what are you expecting with these two drops, you know, should the game continue? I think Pacify ran out of cap, maybe. Yeah, hopefully not. I know he has been having a bit of internet problems and issues at the moment. So let's hope that... Oh, and we are back. There we go, he's back. Cool. There we go. So we can now see what's going to happen with those drops. Okay, let's pause the game. Cool. Are you going to pause or should I pause? I can't pause. I can't pause either. Pause. There we go, start rough pause the game. <laughs> That's a bit of a sucky place to to pause because I think uh, Pacifier can now see on the left hand side uh, the drop from Star Drive coming yeah, in. Uh, so not fantastic or ideal. Um, there we go. It's going in. That Templar I don't think does have much. Uh, well, can he see that? Can he see that? No, he cannot. Yes, he can. But uh, it does get picked off. That's quite expensive. Uh, he does pick up his units, but that one marine is not not as lucky. And here we go for the for the expansion, the natural. I think it's a bit late to, to take up credit to be honest, you know, unless you've got uh, quite a lot more. Oh, it's still good. Oh, yo, you fed back the mid mid back as well. So quite a nice win there for the Bassin Fire. Oh, I agree, Bassin Fire is definitely taking that wrong with that. Not going to do much damage. I think that pause did have a bit of an impact on Star Drive's drop. We shouldn't forget, you know, I mean, that was just the harass. We do see the main army at his base. And I think in terms of harass, you know, pulling all of his min all of his um, workers from his mineral line, and we do see he actually pulled the ones with uh, mining from gas as well. Um, so he's only got the two probes mining from the one gas on his natural and none from his second. So his gas mining is going to take quite a bit of a dip at the moment. We do see him take his third now, same as, um, same as Star Drive. And income for these players are actually, you know, quite quite similar. You know, if uh, if Stardrive pulls down his his mules, that is. Yes, I agree. The thing is that I've seen from Stardrive is he has a lot of barracks, and not many of them have been upgraded. There's no tech labs. We do know that against Protoss, Marauders are really good. They absorb that storm. They absorb the damage. He does have a lot of Marines in his armies, which do die very fast against Colossus and Storm. He needs to get more marauders. He needs to upgrade those barracks, get the tech lab, and allow those marauders to do the damage, be able to cut them. There's mm, definitely mm. too many marines there. 
I think the problem for for Stardrath is also, you know, he's he's constantly supply blocked, and I think that's the one thing that um, you know for that he can take out of these games is just the supply block for a little less time. You do see that in some of his fight now, you know, quite a lot of uh, things that he's a lot of minerals that he's getting now, but uh, he needs to build more barracks. He needs to constantly be able to resupply that army because if as long as he's not supply blocked, we do see stuff absolutely just flowing out of that um, out of those barracks. But I think that might be trouble. It's it's just a little bit weird for me that he's he's seen those high templar and yet he, you know he continues to build so many marines. Yes, I agree. Need marauders. Marauders are really good at taking those storms. We only see one barracks with a tech lab on it. He needs to get those other barracks upgraded. There's not even a reactor on there. No tech lab. No reactor. Nothing. That's even point mm -hmm. is getting marines. Rather even get two marines at a time. But he needs to get that tech lab built and he needs to get it fast. Because those high temps are going to do massive damage. Even as the class is out. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we... <laughs> one can put a lot of storm on uh, on all of those high templar. We do have plus three, plus one. Plus one, plus three for our Protoss player to plus two, plus two to the Terran player. Of Star Drop. He has got yep. a couple of siege tanks there, which I don't see doing too much damage against his army. There's a lot of Zelots there, he needs to rather get some Helians out. It's almost like there was an informal agreement between these two players, you know, that uh, both of us will go to 200 supply cap and we can actually put out, uh, you know, two battle on the battlefield. Let's, let's see what we can do. We do see him taking out that proxy pylon on the west side of the map, and that is no more. So here's the main army for. Pacifier now moving out. That's a uh, that's that's quite a lot of area of effect damage. You know, two colossus and then eight high templar with storm. This I is going to hurt. I think it'll be very nice for even that one sentry to be able to go with two hallucinations and go with two colossus to make it look like he has four. I think it'll be a very mm. good move. And the high templar actually going in a different direction. Ah, okay. I thought there was a reason for that. Maybe you know, approach the army from the one side, storm them to hell on the other side. But it doesn't seem like that is the case. And here we see a drop going in, you know, four... He's going to lose both his medivacs, I think. Both his medivacs are going to go if he goes into the main base. I also think so. Here we go. Um, no, he's actually going to get away with it. So oh, both one both. getting at the two marines! That wow. was unbelievable. Here we see the main army moving in. Oh, and I think those storms are going to do a massive amount of damage if they go down. But they don't seem to be getting down. The tanks do get some shots off. But that's a lot of zealots, eh? Oh, oh, man. Man. Yeah. That. The storm is going to come down, they're storming those tanks, and he's going to lose a lot of army up there. The Gilots yeah. are dead, but there's nothing still going to land off the force. Those Colossus are going to do all the damage. You need to target those Colossus down and kill them. I also do think so, the other bank has do come out. And uh, still not, I think, the best choice. There we go, the first one goes down. And uh, I do think that uh, if Star Drive actually has got so many barriers, he can actually and uh, take this out and he does take that out but that was that was absolutely fantastic I think Star Drive did so well in defending that that was a death ball of note not enough storms going down in the beginning and even when the storms went down Star Drive actually pulled his army you know out of that you know just behind it even though they took quite a little bit of damage but that did give him the opportunity to to save some of that and not uh, lose everything in that battle but uh, have some left over to take out the Vikings and the last couple of units from Pacifier. Yes, I agree. We do see additional robotic phase being built. We do see more upgrades for that shield. He, I think this game is going to go towards our Protoss player. He has a lot. He's going for drops. He's got better upgrades. He's got a lot of resources. He's got 2,800 resources. He can just build gateways and resupply and resupply and resupply. Well, he is mining off four bases, and if, if you look at his worker supply, I think that's the one thing that favors Star Drive in this game. 81 worker supply for Pacifier. So what that does mean is if Star Drive can actually get up to the cap of 200, that means there's a bigger army to fight for Star Drive compared to Pacifier. Yes, I agree. And if we look at it, a lot of workers not mining at the, at the expansion. I do see a warp prism with two high Templar. That is going to go and warp there and storm those workers. There's a there's quite a big army coming out now for Star Drive that he's um, he's going to start attacking with, just bringing that Viking for you know for for vision, and he needs to siege those tanks if he wants to do enough damage. And are they going to get out? Oh, he's dead. He might be able to kill this. He might be able to do enough damage. Those 
right away just to make sure that he can ward off that uh, that 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 counter attack that's coming and still no attachments onto those barracks he needs those marauders those marauders you need to come out when we the storm goes down he kills a lot of workers with that Yo, storm that was that was really 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 good wow mm. yeah i think if we if we look at at workers at the moment you know that that did quite a bit of damage for you know, for for pacifier, units killed. We see over two hundred units killed for for pacifier versus seventy four for star drive. You know, and forty nine workers. This just tells about how well star drive is actually handling all of this pressure. You know, um, it doesn't matter what he's being fed. Um, you know, he, he he actually just defends so well. The way that he spends his minerals are so 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 effective. But um, I do think that fourth base coming down out is a little bit late. Um, a lot of, yo, know, there's, 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 there's quite a, quite a lot of units for, um, for pacifier at the moment. So make sure that he's coming in now, but they're going to be coming up quite quickly. So, uh, there we see at the, uh, at the left base for, for Star Drive again, being harassed there by a lot of zealots. Uh, that, that, that command is so he but he is killing workers, he is storming very well, he needs to kill that warpism with that, with those barking. But he doesn't. He is really. He's, he's allowing Pathfire to dictate the game. Pathfire is expanding. He's got the resources. He has the gateways. He has the map control. He's just going to drop and harass and prevent Star Drive from moving out. What he is doing is he is doing what a Terran player should be doing to a Protoss guy. As Protoss. Yeah, that's very true. And there we do see the Vikings actually taking two shots at that whole prison. But uh, Andy actually does take it out. But we do see some of that coming up the bottom of the, of the expansion for Star Drive again. But all of those things going down and again, a lot of economic damage again to Star Drive. And I think this must be such a thorn in his side at the moment. I think we're going to see a GG here very soon. We see more Zelos just coming in all over the map. Zelos are just coming in and coming in. There is no medivac to heal this army. Those Zelos are going to be able to do all the damage in the world. There are still too many marines. The tanks are not going to be able to do enough damage to those Zelos. The micro for Star Drive here is fantastic. You know, with all of that, he still came out on top. And Pacifier actually losing 50 supply worth of units to the 15 of Star Drive. So I think that engagement was absolutely phenomenal for Star Drive. Very, very well done there. But if you look at the resource resource collection rates, definitely gone down a lot mm. to Star yeah. Drive. Workers Just, killed storms 66, did a lot of damage. Sixty six workers killed to five in favor of Pacifier. And here comes another wave of Zelot into the top. And there we see that uh Mansory Fortress being attacked but uh, Star Drive actually will be able to defend this one off. Yo, and we do see here he has six carriers with another three being built. This is gonna be a surprise. I, I think do not think he's gonna be expecting this. Not at all. I think he's toying that with That is a lot. And he does see it. He and we see a GG. GG and he takes the game 3-0. What a very good series this was. We do see a dominance from our Protoss player, Pacifier, taking the game 3-0. This was definitely had his name written all over it and he has taken this game, playing very well in all three games. I think take nothing away from Star Drive. You know, um, he he played phenomenally well. Um, it wasn't were runaway victories all round. I think the first two games were really really close. The third game as well was fairly close up until round about the probably Those just about the 15 game. minute mark. But uh, these guys really really did well. No, they did. They did very well. Um, Pacifier managed to keep his composure, do a lot of harass, and prevent. Star Drive from attacking and not allowing him to attack, keeping him in his base, not allowing him to move out was definitely a good game. I completely agree. Cool. Actually, well, from from myself, Pluto, and you Switch. Your channel. This is the end of our shot shot casting game between Pacifier and Star Drive.